Hello, welcome to Vernier Video Analysis. In order to get started, if you haven't already started your free trial, that's the first thing you need to do. So navigate to www.vernier.com slash product slash video analysis, or click on the link below in the video description. This will land you on this page where if you scroll down, you'll be able to request your extended free trial, which is good through June of 2020. Click on the free trial tab and fill out the form. Please agree to the End User License Agreement, or EULA. This will allow you to get started as soon as possible with your students. Once you've submitted your form, you should get an email that looks a lot like this. But your free trial is not for 30 days, unless today is May 30th. This link here will give you access to your 30-day free trial. Go ahead and click it, and that's how you'll get started. Once you've clicked on the link in the email, you'll get to this screen. Your license key is already entered, so all you have to do is click Submit. You are now ready to analyze a video. Let's choose from one of our sample videos. We have six currently. Let's do basketball shot. Before I add a point and advance the video, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to advance the video to where the ball is in free motion, and I'm going to change the video options so that I'm adding a point every two frames instead of every one frame. This makes it go quicker for me. Choose a place on the basketball, or whatever your object is, and mark that point consistently. Notice that all of my measurements are in PX, or pixels. I want to add an actual scale. So we have a meter stick in the shot, so I'm going to move the scale bar over to the meter stick. That puts my measurement in meters. I'm also going to move the origin of my axes to that very first dot that I made. OK, this looks good. Oh, except this doesn't look quite the way I want it to. Hmm, I'm going to go and edit that. Ooh, now I see it. It looks like I put this in the wrong place. I'm going to go back to that particular point, and I'm going to move it to where it belongs. Notice when I move it, I get a trash can at the bottom of the screen. I could delete that point entirely if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I just want to fix it. Looks all better now. OK, I'm now interested in analyzing my graph. Here's my graph. It's a little bit small. I can make it bigger two ways. I can use the handles to move it like so, or I can just get rid of the other elements on the screen, the video and the data table. There we go. I'm interested in analyzing the motion of my projectile. I'd like to start with the horizontal velocity. I can get that two ways. So in order to do both graphs at once, I'm going to show two graphs and make this one the horizontal velocity graph, and then my upper one is my horizontal position graph. I can get the slope of the horizontal position graph by choosing to add a curve fit. Let's choose a linear one. All right, not bad. Let's take a look at the horizontal velocity graph. That looks kind of weird. I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'm going to edit the graph options so that I'm always scaling from zero. That evens it out a lot. Second of all, I'm going to, instead of doing a linear fit, I'll choose to view the statistics. And the statistics will show me the average and the standard deviation, as well as the minimum and maximum. So my average is 2.243 meters per second with a standard deviation of 0.157. I get a slope 
of 2.197. 2.197 is pretty close to 2.243, so we're getting pretty much the same value either way. I'm also interested in the vertical velocity. I can choose to show the vertical position instead of the horizontal position, get rid of my linear fit, and I can show the vertical velocity on this graph. This looks kind of like a parabola. I'm going to choose a quadratic fit. All right, I get a value for the first term in the quadratic of negative 4.533. All right, and then for my vertical velocity, I'm going to put a linear fit on. And the slope is negative 8.926. Well, if you multiply negative 4.533 by 2, you'll get something close to negative 8.926. How about that? I hope you enjoyed this little tour of Vernier Video Analysis. Have fun!